From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid, where we're going to be talking about a topic that we've covered before. Yes, but, but it's our most popular or one of the insanely popular. Yeah. Cold calling. Is Josh had to start topic. that little pause. There's Josh had to lean over to his no, phone. The little pause is I always phone. write out an intro. Okay. Right. And then I try, but I try and have like a more organic sort of more organic jump into it. So I don't want to just jump right into the intro. Yeah. So then I'm trying to like figure out, okay, how do I then take our banter and then naturally go into the intro? <laughs> There's a lot of thought that goes into this ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> like hardcore thought right here, but we already like talked on some of the things yeah, that are did. in the intro. So if I say it again, It'll just sound ridiculous. But hey, we have heard time and time again, people say cold calling is dead and the inbound is where all the money is. However, cold calling continues to be the most popular topic on our own site and in fact accounts for over 40% of all of our sales yeah. in 2020. So the question isn't really, should I cold call? It's how do I cold call better? Yes. And that is what we're going to talk about today. What's interesting also about cold calling is I think the reason why it's one of the most popular, because there's no way around it when you're actually in business and you're trying to generate deals, Mm -hmm. you realize, yeah, I can run a Facebook ad. I can do direct mail farming. I can do all this advertising. But at the end of the day, most business doesn't just walk in the door to you. You got to proactively go out and outreach to it. So there's really two options there. One is face to face and people hate door knocking more than they hate like cold calling. And then the other is picking up the phone. It's your most natural way from a speed standpoint to be able to close a deal. Even the leads that come off of like your Facebook ads or come off your website. How else are you going to get that person to pull out the credit card to sign the contract? You got to talk to them. And the phone is one of the best ways. Well, I think that there's, there's two different calls, types of calls. Also, there's the, you know, you generate a lead for your business inbound. Someone raises their hand and says that they're interested. I think a lot of people also want to hear tips on how to make that phone call from an inquiry. Um, The cold call we were even talking about uh, before the podcast in your office and sort of there's varying degrees. Varying degrees of cold. There's like the phone book. You know, which is about as ice cold as you can get. Then so when leverage, when right? I first started calling, yeah. we were calling just uh, agents, like real estate agents, financial advisors, just off of their online website. We'd go to their website. They have their phone number up there. They would have their stats up there. And we just grab that phone number and call. So it's a lot like calling the phone book, just cold out of the blue. Other types of calls that we do that are uh, start warming up a little bit. Maybe it's the the chilled call. (laughs) You know, it's not quite as cold as cold. It's, it's, It's pretty cold though. It's in the refrigerator. Yeah. Not the freezer. It's not the freezer. <laughs> no, but it's finding leverage. And this was yeah. kind of the thing that we were talking about. We're going to dig into some some of the t- actual tips for when you're making the call. But finding the leverage and giving yourself a better chance for whenever you do that, make that call, that could be finding information on people online and kind of yep. you maybe prospecting them a little bit over social media first uh, before making the phone call. That could be uh, referrals, right? Yep. So referrals are still a cold call. You're still calling somebody without them actually asking for information from you. But there's leverage there. There's a relationship. Hey, someone let me know to give you a call about it. So almost like uh, what you're looking for is, is speaking something out that will catch their ear, that prospect's ear that they know about, that yeah. they they know, okay, there's something important here, whether it's a referral's name, it's a piece that they've written that you've seen, it's something about their company, whatever it is, it's like you're using that as a way to just earn another 10 seconds yeah. so they don't bang on you right away. So I'm going to I'm gonna give you, I'm going to set you up with a little bit of a trust here. So you know how you said you got to mention your accolades at the beginning of speaking, yes. you know, whenever you're doing like a webinar or something like that. Luke's team, and this is just in the last two years, because all that we had data to go yeah. Back on. Luke's team has successfully sold over 30,000 people over the phone alone, just over the phone. That doesn't count all the other sales that we've done. And we have a special guest. We we have have a dog. Oh, you guys have to check out the YouTube video now because um, Steve, he got a dog. Now we're calling it the company dog. Her name's Dakota, but she's amazing. (laughs) 
She's awesome. She's probably going to hang timing. out the whole episode. So you're just going to enjoy her running around I love if you that. watch the YouTube video. And we're going to be recording an, a video for our upcoming pet edition after yeah. this, which is perfect. But no, anyway, th- 30,000 phone sales and calling over 500,000 people. That's just within the last two years. Now, you've been doing this with the company for yeah. 10 years. So yeah. kind of go through your tips for yep. successful cold calling, successful sales calling? I think there's a lot of hacks out there and a lot of tips you can give on cold calling. What I tried to think about as we were preparing for this episode is what is it that I really think matters for my crew that comes in? So when we start, we're starting like eight new salespeople a month. When we start them, what is one of the most important things that they have to realize when they're making the cold calls? One of the first things you have to realize is that confidence is the most critical component, I believe, mm. to being able to close a deal. Confidence is in, in confidence is not something that you actually can just come up with on your own, right? It's not something that you just immediately wake up and today you're like, I feel confident. I'm going to claim confidence, right? I think uh, David Goggins calls that BS when you're just doing an <laughs> affirmation that's not built on anything. So, so how do you come up with this confidence? Because people want to buy from people they look up to. They don't want to buy from people they look at or look down upon. And then on top of that, if you look at studies of like pessimist versus optimist, and they studied this, a psychologist, I forget his last name, but it's Martin something. He studied this and he looked at salespeople and salespeople that were optimist, that displayed this amount of confidence in what they were presenting to this optimism closed 20 to 40% more yeah. than people who were pessimistic. And so how do you get confidence? What I always tell people is a lot of confidence, especially when you're entering into a new sale, when you're entering into what you're trying trying to uh, to represent, you build your confidence on two things. You build it on the testimony of what's come before you, Mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have any experience, which the best place to build your confidence is to look at your past successes. This is also proven true in psychology. When you, when you're down on yourself, think about your wins, even if they're small wins, because it's been, it's been proven in studies. When you actually think about your past successes, it switches your mindset Mm. to give you confidence on your future success because I've accomplished X, Y, and Z, I know I can accomplish ABC type idea. But you might not have that entering into a new sale. Maybe you've never sold a home, but guess what? You can lean on the testimony of what's come before you. So maybe you start with the new brokerage in real estate. You should know their stats. You should know how many clients they've helped. You should memorize testimonials. Like for us, I tell my sales class, get on our Facebook page, memorize the testimonials of how we're helping clients because that conviction, when you memorize it, that's going to come across in your confidence on the phone. And when you get to the point of asking somebody for the order and they tell you, I can't give you the card or the credit card right now because I'm driving. The only way you're going to be able to tell them to pull over to the side of the road is that if you have complete confidence and what you're presenting to them is of more value than the inconvenience they're going to face in the five minutes of pulling over to the side of the road. So you really have to have that confidence that will influence your belief in being able to pitch. Yeah. The second way to get confidence. Well, I think that uh, just to kind of go off that, I think that's so true in what you're saying in terms of like confidence comes from knowledge and confidence comes from preparation. Exactly. Meaning if like we've, we even see this on our own webinars. Like if uh, I used to think, and this is horrible, but I've never been a very outgoing guy. So I've never been great at presenting. I thought people just naturally got, they were good at presenting. I just thought you just had natural good speakers. And there is, there's a lot of innate talent there, but it comes from intentional practice and being extremely prepared because you will be more confident whenever you speak then. Your pitch is like a muscle. Your ability to give that pitch, the more you do a repetition, the more you're going to strengthen that muscle. Who is a great example that we just saw play this out? Freaking Tom Brady. Like uh, all my Tom Brady fans, cover your ears. Can't I can stand finally the guy. enjoy watching Tom yeah. Brady because he no longer plays for the Patriots and I'm a Dolphins fan. So. Dude, <laughs> can't stand the guy in, in the aspect of because he's not my team. But the mad respect you have to have for somebody that is able to go to 10 Super Bowls. But on top of that, you know his confidence in the two-minute warning. If you watch the interviews of his team at Tampa Bay after that game when he won the NFC Championship or whatever. I think this comes out after the Super Bowl. So yeah, we'll so I don't see. know who's going to win the Super Bowl at this point. All the stages. <laughs> listen to what his team said. His team said the confidence and leadership he brought into the locker room, his belief. Where did that come from? It's what you said. That's the second component of confidence. It comes from preparation. It comes from... 
Siri is having trouble hearing us. Josh's phone is going off. But it comes from his preparation in the film room. It comes from what he eats, how much he sleeps, all the things that he's regimented himself to do. That is what's built the affirmation for him to go, I can lead this team to a Super Bowl because it's not built on false BS. It's it's built on repetition and preparation and all those things. So confidence is one of the key components to a great salesperson. And as Grant Cardone says it best, frequency creates greatness. So what is the first thing you have to do when you're starting cold calling is you must be frequent before you're great. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so that's my first point on, on cold calling. This has been one of those podcasts, man. It's been, it's been weird. We had dogs. We had Siri going off. No, look, 93% of the success of your cold call is going to be attributed to the uh, tone of your voice during the conversation. That's so crazy. being able to step in with that confidence uh, and be able to speak with authority is huge. Also wanted to point out kind of as you were going, because it's not all about speaking. I want to get to your next point also, but uh, successful cold calls have a 55 to 45 ratio, uh, talk to listen ratio, meaning you should be listening 45% of the time. So, well, there's also a study that says drivers are the number one personality for sales. Mm. So being a driver, someone now drivers can a lot of times be, you know, perceived as they're, you know, running over people and stuff like that. They don't care about people's feelings, but there was a big study done and the driver personality came out on number one. That's crazy. So talk about the one call close mentality, because I think that also plays into confidence. And then we'll kind of wrap up with some tips and tricks for actually having some success on, on cold calls. Well, the reason why I harp on the one call close mentality is because I believe most salespeople are extremely soft. I think most salespeople, they give up too soon. Uh, In sales, it takes stepping out of your comfort zone. It takes uh, putting the prospect in a place outside their comfort zone. Why? Because you're asking them to make a decision. You're asking them to to accept change. And most people don't like making decisions and they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. And so as a salesperson, and and I think the stats prove this out, it proves out in follow-up. The average salesperson follows up 1.2 times. Why? Because they're afraid of that rejection. They're afraid of of pushing and making that uh, contact or that prospect feel awkward, but it also plays out in your pitch. Most people will accept the first no or accept the second no. What we teach here is you must at least push through three no's. Like you really, and a lot of times you might get five no's, six no's, seven no's, right? The reality of it is, is the one call close mentality is this, is that the first objection people give you, even up to the third objection and more, is not the real objection. The real objection is always value. They haven't seen enough value in what you're presenting, value that you bring forward in order to make a decision. Because I always give the example, if you have a million dollars in your hands and you offer that to the prospect, are they going to say no if they can literally see the million dollars? Of course, they're not going to say no. In (laughs) fact, I tell my salespeople, even if they don't have the money, they don't, let's say your product is a thousand dollars. They have to pay you a thousand dollars to receive the million dollars that you're about to give them in your hand. Even if they don't have it, guess what they're going to do? They're going to become resourceful. They're going to call their friends, their family. They're going to go to bank, try to get a loan because they believe in the value that you're representing to them. So every time someone, and this applies to like our our, our salespeople who sell the magazine, I say, when they say no to you, what they're saying no to is a magazine. They haven't seen how this magazine can result in changing their lives. So the one call close mentality is not accepting the first no, trying to close the deal on that call, knowing statistically you probably won't, but you're going to get to the real objection. And the real objection is the key to sales. You got to be direct with people. I'm tired of this BS of dancing around the bush thinking you're going to manipulate someone into saying yes to you. Come out and say it. It's like the start of your sales call, your cold call. State your intention, why you're calling. Don't try to manipulate them. People are tired of that BS and that fluff. The stats, State your intention. The stats back it up. Stating a reason for your cold outreach can boost success rates by 2.1 times. Yeah. So you can double your success rate just simply by stating your intention. Most people think they can smooth talk someone into an order instead of realizing, no, this is about presenting value. I believe I can either help a pain that's happening in your life and make it better, or I can help you achieve a desire that you want in your life that you you would actually pay for. I'm going to present those to you, give you, and and this is the key is one is you got to state how you're going to accomplish that for them. You got to state your offer of how you think you can do it. Then you got to create some type of urgency, right? Because people need to buy on urgency. A lot of times deals fail because you haven't created any urgency. And I always tell people the urgency is how fast you want to overcome that pain. Like you can create 
natural urgency outside. Maybe it's a no, the spring market. Yeah. Yeah. But go back to the pain. Like how much how much longer do you want to live in the pain that you're living in? Yeah. Yeah. Right. No one wants to live in the pain that they're living in. Yeah. They just need they what I say is buyers don't take a step forward for the fear of the unknown. And you've got to be the person that steps in as the consultant, as the expert that goes, hey, look, I've been there too. In fact, not only have I been there myself, but I've helped tens of thousands of other clients in the same situation. Yeah. And, and so it's really stating to them that fear of the unknown is never going to go away. I could call you a week from now. You're still going to have that fear of the unknown. I could call you 48 hours from now. You're still going to have that fear of the unknown. But the reality is this, is if you want different results in your life, you got to do different things. Yeah. And what is it that Michael Burt says? Uh, I forget. You got to listen to his podcast, but he basically goes, you know, if you give me a chance, I won't let you fail mm. type idea. He's stating like that confidence in there of what he's going to bring to the table. And that's what you have to do for your prospects. Yeah. I saw an image on Instagram or something that said no for sales. Like no just stands for next opportunity. Yeah. So it's embra- keep, embracing keep the no. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. All right. So what about some quick tips, tricks, hacks, yep. things that you can try, you know, take action on right away? Um, so here's some tips I would give you in, in terms of cold calling. Dakota's back. I love it. You got to check out the YouTube videos. Check out this dog. She is the cutest. She actually came from Turks and Caicos, believe it or not. She was a rescue, I think, from there. But okay, tips for you would be we use local presence. So local presence is the local area code. If you can call with a local area code, the studies show that you increase your pickup rate by 300%. Yeah. That's a big one. Calling within five minutes. You've heard it before on this podcast. The research shows your, your chances of getting people to pick up your phone. So in cold calling, it's not as important, but it's insanely important when they're responding to your email or when they're calling you back. Other tip I would give you is when you leave a voicemail, Grant Cardone would say, always leave a voicemail. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but when you leave a voicemail, Keep your voicemail short. Keep your voicemail to under 20 seconds, I say, and create urgency in your voicemail. You don't have to give them all the information. Another tip that I would give you is the double dial technique, but also with the text. So we learned this from Michael Hellickson, but we've been testing it out on our sales floor. So we have over 120 callers making phone calls. So they will double dial, which means you'll call one time and then within a couple minutes, you'll call again, but then they'll text. In fact, we have a top producer, Joe Frazier, who a lot of times he'll actually text somebody and go, Hey, Josh, you still in real estate? And stuff like that, they'll say yes. He'll then pick up the phone and call them. So, <laughs> yeah, so little yes, little they, tricks, well, right? This might be a lead to, to get people <laughs> to to get people on the phone. There's a lot of uh, other things that we could give you based upon stats, but uh, no, those are that. a few that you. How can much practice. longer do you think local presence will work? with just the... Well, we're already seeing it decline. So you're lucky if you already call with the uh, local area code, but if you're in a business like mine, a lot of times you can't because you call all all over the nation. Yeah. Um, I think it will still exist. I think the people who've created it will just find new ways to get around the... I think that's why the texting and everything and and connecting on social is going to be so much Oh, I didn't even say this. Um, Use social with your cold calling because the studies are showing that like people who use social, salespeople who connect over the phone but also then try through social, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, they they outperform, 78% of the time outperform reps who don't. Wow. Yeah, so crazy. All right, there you go, guys. Yeah. You wanted to learn how to, you showed up to this podcast. Yeah. Wanting to learn how to cold call. Yeah. I think you did. Yeah, well, here's the key to cold calling. Pick up the phone and dial. <laughs> Pick up the phone. Number and dial. one. I didn't even mention one of the most critical components of cold calling is your process and your script. Do the same thing every time so you can track your results. Don't just try something different on every call. It's yeah. one of the most important things. No, and I just want to, I mean, I brought up the stuff at the beginning uh, and the numbers and everything just to show you guys like, hey, we have been here before. Just to kind of push that even further, the cold calling success rate in general is 2%. Hmm. Right. So two out of every hundred people you cold call, you're going to get a sale. Ours as a company over the last two years is 5.5%. Hmm. So what Luke and what our sales team has done is really kind of perfected this. this I was going to say, I think process. our normal days are around, I was going to say like 4.8 or something like that. So even higher than what I thought. <laughs> there you go, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. You can head on over to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes and also to check out the video for this episode with the cute dog Dakota. Let's make Dakota Go viral. Internet star.
We are also, we have an entire training series on cold calling that you guys can check out. So if you go to remindermedia.com slash cold call, there are videos there. There are uh, eBooks there. There are scripts there that you can follow along with and start implementing some of those things in your business today. I know some people can listen to a podcast and take action. Some people need to go read it. Some people need to interact with it, maybe watch a video. So go check all of that out over at remindermedia.com slash cold call. And if you're looking for ways to support the show, we would love it if you subscribe to us on Apple Podcast or Spotify. Leave a review uh, on Apple Podcast. We would love to hear your feedback to see how we're doing. And then the best way to help out the show is to tell a friend. The dad joke today came from my dad joke of the day calendar. This one had me <laughs> Thank chuckling you, Jesse. for about two minutes straight. Why do Danish ships have barcodes on the side? They're barbarians. So when they dock, they can Scandinavian. No freaking Scandinavian. <laughs> I had to say that when I read it, I didn't get it. And then when I said it out loud, that was gold. That one might be one of the best. Yeah. That's good, right? The most clever. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can follow us on Instagram. I am at Stay Paid Podcast. That's the show's Instagram, obviously, at Stay Paid Podcast. Usually I'm the one, uh, or Ariel, will be answering any messages there. And then Luke's on Instagram, at Luke Acree, L U K. A C R E E L U K E A C R E E. Second time that you've done this. He like, can't even no, spell my name. We've been we've been yeah. state paid pals for years now, but you know. For this episode of State Paid, I'm Joshua Stick, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Luke Acre. Here, here's what I would tell you: your action item is is you need to be making cold calls, right? But not cold calls in the sense of the the calls that are in the freezer. There's you don't have to do that anymore. There's so much tech out there. There's so much that you can get access to through LinkedIn, through social to make your calls even warmer, but you have to be making cold calls. In fact, the most successful producers that I work with, they dedicate time for prospecting. They dedicate time to go after, if you're in real estate, FISBOs, expired listings, they are refining their craft. And here's the thing, guys, it's a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it's going to be. So remember this, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 